lymphoid uh, leukemias and lymphoma. So uh, lymphoid leukemias, uh, when we say the word leukemias, it means that the bone marrow has been infiltrated and it may have been spilled into the peripheral blood. Lymphomas, on the other hand, are mostly confined to the lymph node or some extranodal organs. Lymphoma may ultimately, uh, some of the lymphomas may ultimately turn into leukemias by the involvement of bone marrow. And there is another group of disorders that are plasma cell disorders that are uh, also lymphomas and very rarely they could be uh, presenting as leukemias as well. So types of lymphoma can be again broadly demarcated into Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So non-Hodgkin's lymphoma constitute the majority of uh, the lymphoid neoplasms. It can originate from T cells, B cells, or a, another variant of lymphocyte that is natural killer cell. So non-Hodgkin's lymphoma account for 60% of all adult uh, lymphomas. Majority are of uh, B cell origin. So B cell lymphomas are quite uh, common and majority originate from the, the germinal center of the follicles. The DLBCL, is regarded as the most common form of NHL overall. And lymphoma in children, again, it is uh, NHL is the most common uh, form of lymphoma. And uh, in uh, uh, NHL, B uh, Burkitt's lymphoma is regarded as the most common form of NHL in children. So the common clinical presentation that occurs in almost all lymphomas are lymphadenopathy, could be local or generalized. When, we, when I say generalized, generalized means uh, two or more uh, group of lymph nodes are uh, enlarged or involved, and that should be in a non-contiguous uh, uh, fashion. So they should not be in continuity. So that is uh, the definition of generalized lymphadenopathy. Apart from that, hepatosplenomegaly, abdominal mass, these are common clinical features. And uh, they frequently have a leukemic phase. And non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, majority of them, they do occur in older age, usually in the late 50s or 60s. And they are uh, more call, more uh, aggressive in the extreme of ages. They are regarded as more aggressive clinically. NHL uh, generally exhibit two growth pattern morphologically. Either it could be uh, multiple nodules, which are called as nodular or follicular lymphomas. And they can also exhibit a diffuse form of uh, a growth pattern where the tumor cells are diffusely sp scattered and with complete obliteration of the follicular architecture. So you can see in the low power that uh, diffuse pattern with a complete obliteration of the lymph node architecture is seen over here. The lymphoid follicles are not being evident. Whereas here you can see the crowding of uh, the lymphoid follicles, the back-to-back -back arrangement that is quite marked over here. So this is a uh, kind of a nodular pattern and this is a diffuse pattern. The risk factors for NHL, uh, Epstein virus is regarded as one of the important risk factor and the genome is uh, positive in many of the Burkitt's lymphoma and uh, also in DLVCL. And it is uh, worthwhile to know, remember that uh, they can occur uh, with or without uh, uh, the presence of HIV. Many of uh, the Epstein virus affected uh, DLVCL patients, they have also concurrent presence of HIV infection or they are AIDS positive as well. And uh, HIV virus has, uh, himself, it's, itself can cause CNS lymphoma. H. pylori is clearly isolated from uh, malt or uh, mucosa associated lymphoid tissue lymphoma in stomach. So H. pylori has been clearly isolated from that. Autoimmune diseases like Sogren syndrome can also predispose to various uh, lymphomas. And Hashimoto's thyroiditis also predisposing factor for thyroid lymphoma. And irradiation and immunosuppressive therapies are also predisposing factors for NHL. Now the classification, there are many systems of classification. Initial classification was working formulation classification with low grade, intermediate grade and high grade lymphomas. The revised uh, European American uh, classification or real classification that basically demarcates the lymphomas into uh, Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and Hodgkin's lymphomas are again, and the non-Hodgkin's lymphomas are again demarcated into precursor and mature non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which are again of B and T cell type. And Hodgkin's lymphoma is further uh, subclassified into different morphological variants. WHO classification is a recent one and uh, many updates have also been uh, uh, 
coming and this who classification includes many other entities besides the real uh, classification and it is more of a functional classification rather than the morphological classification it and it basically gives undue importance to that of the func uh, the functional classification the immunophenotyping is most important in who classification and it it is basically uh, a classification that is of entire hematopoietic uh, neoplasms and it is not uh, only the lymphomas uh, it is basically the entire hematopoietic uh, neoplasms myeloid lymphoid all kind of malignancies are included in the hematopoietic uh, neoplasms in who classification dlbcl is a now coming to the dlbcl as is the topic uh, today is the dlbcl so after studying the general aspect now let's go to uh, the depth of DLBCL. So it is a highly uh, aggressive but potentially curable B cell lymphoma. When I say potentially curable B cell lymphoma, if the chemotherapy is instituted well uh, in the early stages, it can be potentially curable. So it may occur in older patients but has a wide range including the children as well. And it has been clinically observed that slight uh, male uh, preponderance is being seen. The and the patients usually present with a rapidly enlarging mass either at a single nodal or extranodal site that is the common presentation of DLBCL. So symptoms are very commonly seen due to the mass effect, due to the pressure effect, or the compression of the norm normal surrounding structure. DLBCL is regarded as very aggressive but responds to chemotherapy and if the chemotherapy is instituted well in time, almost 50% remission and cure almost 50% remission and complete cure also may be uh, observed in many of the patients. And it progresses rapidly if uh, it's not treated in time. And it uh, really proves so fatal if it is not uh, treated well. So DLBCL common presentation grossly is a atypical, isolated, large, irregular mass. You cannot uh, see any kind of a well-defined margin over here. And this large mass, bulky mass is usually seen, it can involve either lymph nodes, spleen, or many other internal organs as well. It can even involve uh, the various lymphoid tissues present in the body, uh, that is Valdez ring. And uh, so it can involve uh, virtually any kind of a body, any kind of body having lymphoid uh, tissue, uh, DLVCL can develop on top of that. And uh, the morphological microscopical picture includes diffusely scattered, very large pleomorphic cells. You can see very large pleomorphic cells. And there are mitosis as well. And there are prominent nuclei uh, with a clumping of chromatin at the nuclear uh, membrane that gives uh, it's a vesicular appearance. Vesicular nuclear uh, pa pattern is seen with multiple uh, two to three prominent nucleoli may be observed and the cells look extremely pleomorphic and the mitosis are frequently observed. And if we do a CHI-67 index, uh, uh, IS by ISC, that is an indicator of uh, uh, the mitotic activity, the proliferative activity will almost get uh, 50 to 70 percent of positivity. And whereas in the buckets, if we do, that is that will give around 90 to 100 uh, percent uh, positivity of CHI-67. So CHI-67 is a bit distinguishing factor between the buckets as well and uh, this diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Also, another difference is that the DLBCL cells are quite pleomorphic, whereas compared to that of monomorphic and the small to medium-sized appearance of Burkitt cells. So morphology, uh, large irregular infiltrating lesion in nodal extranodal location. Microscopy composed of large cells with a diffuse growth pattern that is characteristically seen. Tumor cells express all the markers like CD10, 19, 20, all may be seen. Variable expression, most commonly expressed marker is BCL6 overexpression is seen. BCL2 uh, may be uh, seen sometimes when it is developed from uh, that of a prior existing follicular lymphoma. If it develops into uh, the diffuse large B cell lymphoma, BCL2 expression may still persist. And sometimes overexpression of oncogene, that is MYC oncogene, may also be seen. Some, so here, etiology says that there is a 1418 translocation may be seen and corresponding BCL2 uh, will be seen if the DLBCL has de developed from the prior existing follicular lymphoma. BCL2-6 oncogene rearrangement is the most frequently chromosomal abnormality. And some of the DLBCL may get transformed from a C uh, this chronic lymphocytic leukemia or a small lymphocytic lymphoma 
and this particular transformation of CLL uh, or SLL into DLBCL is known as Richter syndrome. This you need to remember. And many of the DLBCL are also associated with immunodeficiency states. So special types include the immunodeficiency associated large B cell lymphoma. It occurs with uh, patients with HIV infection or transplant uh, recipients. In this condition, the DLBCL develops and uh, the tumor cells are characteristically infected with EBV. EBV positivity is seen. Body cavity based large B cell lymphoma, it can again develop in patients with HIV uh, infection and the, the tumor cells are often uh, seen infiltrating the pleural sac, uh, pleural cavity and, uh, uh, and uh, the, it can also infiltrate uh, the peritoneum and present as uh, ascetic effusion as well. So uh, we get uh, the classical presentation of uh, uh, DLBCL in this uh, context as uh, plural or ascetic effusion. And often we get uh, the genome positivity of HHV8 uh, is being isolated from these uh, lymphomas. So treatment and prognosis, uh, aggressive combination chemotherapy helps in achieving complete uh, remission and cure in many of the patients. Extent of the disease spread at the time of diagnosis is the most important uh, uh, prognostic factor. MIC translocation overall imparts a bad prognosis. And these days for uh, to treat re relapsed refractory DLBCL, uh, this chimeric antigen receptor T cells, which are particularly uh, lab modified T cells, and they are directed against uh, the B cells containing the CD19 antigen. So these are being used largely these days uh, uh, to target uh, refractory uh, DLBCL. And also we have uh, anti-CD20 uh, monoclonal antibodies are also available uh, for specific uh, targeting. So now uh, let's uh, wrap up the session with a case discussion that is going to involve everything, whatever we have studied so far. So 42 year old woman presents with an enlarged supraclavicular lymph node. The patient is HIV positive, takes antiviral uh, medications, lymph node biopsy is showing large pleomorphic cells with prominent nucleoli. Tumor cells express B cell antigen are, and are positive for Epstein-Barr virus. So which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? So you can see the clinching features are supraclavical lymph node enlargement and uh, HIV positivity and the lymph node biopsy shows large pleomorphic cells with prominent nucleoli. So large pleomorphic cells with prominent nucleoli and on the, uh, in the context of HIV positive individual and supraclavicular lymph node enlargement and additional finding is EBV genome. So EBV positivity is also seen. So all these features are in keeping with the diagnosis of DLBCL. So, uh, DLBCL here, uh, the description is given that large pleomorphic cells with prominent nucleoli. So Burkitt's lymphoma can also have, uh, can also develop in this context, uh, like HIV positivity, EBV uh, genome positivity, but the Burkitt cells will be more of a uh, medium sized cells, will not be pleomorphism, will not be, rather than that, the cells will be more or less monomorphic. Pleomorphism will not be marked. And uh, here uh, the cells are large pleomorphic cells, so it is more likely to be a case of diffuse large B cell lymphoma. So that's how uh, you should approach a case uh, and uh, various uh, questions pertaining to the DLBCL. Hope you learned all the salient aspects of uh, DLBCL uh, pertaining to the pathogenesis, the association with EBV and HIV and the treatment uh, outlines and the immunophenotyping. These are the important uh, features that are often being asked. So uh, please try to uh, review this uh, video again and again to recap uh, the important uh, points. And uh, don't forget uh, to uh, give your feedback. That really motivates me to have more and more videos. And uh, also, uh, please don't forget to subscribe the channel for uh, lots of interaction ahead. Thank you for your patient uh, hearing. See you all in the next video. Bye-bye.